Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Peru Bolivia here on 8th, March 18th, 1855 in the game. I am Stuart. This is Sports, History, and Gaming. And it is always, if anybody wishes to leave a like, comment, or subscribe, it always helps the channel. Thank you to anybody and everyone who has already done so. We are here with General Andreas de Santa Cruz. Our government is at 58. Our re armed forces are at 23.3%. Catholic Church at 22.9%. We could try to reform the government. However, if we try to bring in like the intelligentsia, it would bring us down. The landowners would bring us down. The rural folk would bring us down. The industrialists would bring us down. So nobody is really in a position where they're going to um, bring up the legitimacy of the government. We do have negative 21.9% bureaucracy, 72 and a half authority, 565 influence, 154 convoys, 5.53 thousand gold slash pounds, whatever you want to call it, a week. A GDP of 4.6, a literacy rate of 28.2% of the country, a standard of living of 10.5, 3.7 million people, of which 473,000 are radical, and we have 85. Uh, we'll call it 86,000 followers. So, we have a number of input good shortages, and we're also currently building whaling stations now. Uh, we can no longer have diplomatic ties with the Bering and Kingdom losing their interest in Grand Columbia. Venezuela is approving relations with me. I imagine that is being built by... Um... The aristocrats, because um, they are going to build banana plantations in Alto Paraguay, and they are waiting for other private constructions to complete. Now, I really don't know why we're building a whaling station. I mean, it'll give us meat, sure, but and oil, I guess. But I think they could just build it. Uh, Oh, what is it called? Crap, I almost called it a fabric setter. I, uh, yeah. Livestock red. Right, because that gives us that fabric, beet, and fertilizer. Now, it does require grain. So, yeah, we need small arms, artillery, men of wars, and paper arms. It could put good shortages. There are two states, the Turboil, Lima, and Peruvian, per Bolivian, Juge. Grand stakes on Sierra Leone's debt. Uh, we have one inactive trade route from America, which is slightly improves our bureaucracy. Deficit high tensions with Peru, Bolivia, and Guarani. We have low market access in Lima. We have expensive government goods of paper, and then small arms, men of war, and artillery are all expensive in the overall scheme of things. So we are building another tooling workshop that we are building. Uh, again, private investment is something that could happen here in the game, and then we want to build an arms industry. So, the reason we're building a tooling workshop is if we go in here to our goods and our balance orders, again, we're negative 235 of the grain. This plus 8 right now on the lumber, plus 47 on the fabric. That we have a lot of. Tools were negative 18, and iron were just plus 2 on. Now, my hope is, I remember, negative 5 on the fertilizer. We're going to try to create more iron so we can build our own arms industry. By building our own arms industry, we can address the shortfall of the small arms. We can potentially address the shortfall of the artillery, although we would need hardwood in order to do that. Um, and I don't know... Is there anywhere out here that we can get hardwood? Uh, the Confederate market, the British, Dutch, Russian, and French market produce hardwood. So that's a that's a no. Uh, we want landed voting as being enacted. Again, the Confederate States of America is quite larger than it was in real life, and is. I mean, I oh, I would almost think would expect to actually take over the entire of the United the entirety of the United States. This I would think from a population standpoint. I mean, Michigan. D.C., like New Jersey, Massachusetts, and like Maine and Florida are the only real heavily populated areas I think at this time. 
going to be honest, even in the modern day, if you controlled all of this, the I mean, United States, Illinois, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, um, Louisiana, Missouri, St. Louis, you know, Georgia with Atlanta, right. that's a pretty sizable chunk of the United States, you know, per day population, let alone back then. So, we do have really low taxes, which we've tried to use to offset the standard of living increase, which is where a lot of our radicals come from. Um, although right now, 13.8 thousand, basically 14, are coming from discrimination. So, there is that as well. So we're 77 weeks away out of the tooling center, or the tooling workshop. They are 23 weeks away from the healing station, which again, we're negative 40 on the meat, so I totally get that. Uh, the industrialists at the, at, the, at the private investment is trying to address the shortfalls, right? which is a very good thing. It's just, I'm not sure if I, you know, and I'm probably choosing the wrong building, so they're probably better off than we. Venezuela is taking on the national debt, or France is taking on Venezuela's national debt, sorry. Um, you know, France and England at 1.2 seem to definitely be buying up a lot of, and a lot of the national debt of a lot of other countries. So there is that as well. Um, going on we're trying to make it work here we want to become somewhat self-sufficient we want to you know be able to do things on our own without having to rely on you know foreign countries but you know the reality of the situation also is that you know we're a smallish nation we have infrastructure issues um, we don't have a massive population we have about four little under four million people which gives us um, a population growth of 1.05%, which is 39,000 30 annually, and we are the 35th biggest nation in the world. So we're not tiny, but we're just, right, we're not, we're also not, you know, massive, and we're not as developed, and we have some huge deficits. Um, you know, if we change production on any lot, rice farm in La Paz, Um, we could grip more fruit and sugar by changing soil and machine farming. We would need 10 more fertilizer. I think we're already short fertilizer, but we'll give us 30 more grain. And that'll also change, give us the learn the grain, learn the game, sorry, learn the grain, learn the game uh, achievement here in the journal. But it does. Again, push us down to negative 15 fertilizer, and it doesn't significantly change the negative grain situation that we have going on in improved Bolivia. There's just not a lot right now that's going to be able to do that. And again, you know, if we wanted to import grain, okay, so Russia and the Confederate market would give us a lot, right? So. We can expand the productive building that has been added to the journal, the dye plantations in area equipa. So this would cost us 15 bureaucracy at 8.66 uh, gold, right? Trade revenue after tariffs, so we'd make 8.7 annually. Um, we would need 47 convoys. Impact of grain on the Confederate market would go from 19.6 to 20. It would go from 45.4 to 22.5 in the Peru Bolivian market. We are going to do that. We're going to take the level 5 big grain and we're going to import grain. And then we're going to take this, um, which we, we would get uh, after tariffs, 175, 9.13 employee annuallys. We will get another 15 bureaucracy loss. So we'll go to negative 37.7, which is just atrocious. But our cost of grain on the Bolivian market will go down another 2 pounds, I, I, I would say. And we, our employees will make 8.27 annually. The Netherlands have declared Denmark to be their rival. So, even though that is going to very negatively impact our bureaucracy, 
with a score of negative 37, which is a plus 10.9% tax waste. It is, however, going to apparently not even make a dent on our um, okay, well, trade routes right now are just at 20. So we're going to have another 180. Um, and it's going to really make a big difference in the grain production or the amount of grain we have in our country. Which should help a little bit in terms of the um, standard of living. It, and that should also drive some of the radicalization down. Again, it, it, it's not going to fix everything. France has taken on Coley's national debt. A again, we're just... We're in a situation where... What else are we really short? Okay, liquor. Nobody's going to give us enough. Okay, men of war. The Confederate market and the French market. How? Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's really gonna. Uh, okay. Oh wow! Great. Wow. Okay, there's just a lot going on. So, rivalry between has been broken between the British and the Ottomans and the French and the Ottomans. Uh, rivalry has also been broken between Russia and the Ottomans. Um, the East India Company has started an annexed country diplomatic play against Hindustan. Right. Um, we have we have just one clipper. That is what we need. Um, we're we're gonna get more fish from the whaling place. We need seven men of war. We need three paper. We need seventy four luxury clothing. Um, I mean, we could just support the silk. Oh, that's not gonna work. Luxury clothes we could get. We have 256 convoys remaining. The British market and the French market we could get 50. We would get 16.7 pounds annually to the employees. It would go from 105 to 81.9. It would cost 15 bureaucracy. I think we'll take that from the French or the British market. Again, we're at negative 53 bureaucracy. I, d I don't want to make any more trade deals right now. Um, but we, we are really trying, and you can see the income is going down because of the bureaucracy deficit. But we are, Confederate States begin embargoing the United States. But we are trying to, again, improve the, the, the lives of our people. Um and increase the standard of living when where we can. Um, that, that's not always something that's easily done. Again, most of our goods, we want to try to um, protect the domestic supply whenever possible. Uh, we may end up hurting us when it comes to trade, but and our GDP is down to 4.5 million now, um, which we, we, we don't want to see, obviously. But now, building a banana plantation is going to give us fruit, apparently. Um, obvious, obviously, I mean, bananas are a fruit. But, you know, we're even at that, although apparently that, again, is considered to be a high price. Um, Sweden has interest in the Andes, so we can open diplomatic plays with them. You know, we are, we're just, is there anyone hardwood? See, I, I, I don't know exactly how much hardwood it would cost to do that. Lima, I think we are going to have to improve the government administration building because that does give us plus 70 bureaucracy, plus 10 tax capacity, and it gives us plus 40 urbanization total. Oh, but it uses, it uses infrastructure. Okay, so never mind. We don't want to do that. Lima's already maxed out infrastructure-wise. 
you can see the radicals are starting to go down a little bit just by 1.2 thousand, right? Okay, so there we go. Negative 21,000 from the increases in standard living and negative 16,000 from Pop's dying event. So it goes down by negative 8,000. Now it's not going to stay that negative for very long, I don't think, unfortunately. But it, it, it is going to help us out in terms of temporarily really dropping the radicals in our country. Or at least, you know, dropping them a significant amount, right, temporarily. So but we're still working on building the Julian workshop. Again, we, we don't have, you know, we are going to have to import more, right? We, we, we just are. Like, it's killing our bureaucracy, but we just, we have plus one lumber right now. That, that, that's not going to be good enough. I mean, I know... I know technically we have, we have the Confederate States that's taken on Uruguay's national debt. So again, a lot of these larger uh, countries of the Confederate States, France and England are taking on a lot of the national debts. You know, we don't have national debt, we, all, we just have massive shortfalls everywhere. Um, and we also have infrastructure limitations. Like Eric Quippa, you know, 7 out of 13 infrastructure right now. We have an iron mine, but it's just producing 16 iron. It can produce, you know, 20 iron, but it's short on tools. But the problem is, those same tools that we could use, we're using iron to create the tools. So, we we just, we don't have, right, it, it's a bit of a struggle right now. We're, we're trying to create production chains without importing just everything. And completely ruining our bureaucracy, which we, we have done to a larger degree to try to bring in the grain and then also the luxury clothing. Um, right? And, and, and it has had some effect. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're stuck. Right? We, we, we are definitely stuck. And in a lot of ways, we're probably going to need another iron mine. Um, because we just, we don't have Antofagasta, 4 out of 10 infrastructure, what's the population? 3.9 thousand, I don't know if that's enough people, but yeah, we're probably, I mean, I don't Because, okay, so, well, we don't probably need another iron iron mine. So, in France takes on Schleswig's national debt, there's a revolution there in Dutch East India. A Dutch East Indies, so where is an iron mine? Okay, so here we are. Well, I'm sorry. We have an iron mine here. So we have the atmospheric engine port. We would need coal and tools. We don't have any coal. And, and, you know, we don't have the tools. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to do that. We're going to put coal mines in Peruvian, Bolivian, Pestaza, right, which we're incorporating at 49% currently. As the leader of the industrialist has retired slash died. Um, because we need coal to increase our iron production. We're going to need iron production to both meet the tool demand and to produce an arms industry. So once we can get some of our own industry up and running, as our standard of living is up to 10.7, then we'll be able to hopefully um, better meet the needs of our people, the... We can now have diplomatic interest with the United States of America because they have an act interest in the... Uh, Andes. We cannot have a trade agreement with the Confederate States of America. We can make you improve relations, I guess, with them to see if maybe we could get a trade agreement that would save bureaucracy and then, again, just the amount of things we could get from them. Um, I would rather have a trade agreement with the United States, but at the same time, I just, with that much, that location of territory as a, that they've lost to the Confederate States, just realistically, I don't know that that's, that's going to be a possibility. 
we are also improving relations with Uruguay, who does have, who is owed and, or who owes the Confederate States, rather, a obligation. So, can we know that we have five buildings affected by the small arms shortfall? You know, the radicals are still obviously very, very high. Mexico has declared the United States to be a rival. Yeah, if I was Mexico right now, if I was a Hudson Bay Company, I would definitely declare war on the United States of America. Now would be the time to do that, where they are definitely weaker, and they're more ripe, ripe for the taking. Um, it's not crazy to me that that's what ended up happening with the Confederate State. I mean, I, I don't even know what would have had to have happened in order. They are protective towards us. The United States is antagonistic towards us. Um, right? Um, yeah, their GDP is 21.9, our GDP is 4.6. Um, they would allow us to become their protectorate, but I don't want to become their protectorate, right? Um, I'm just willing to potentially trade with them um, in order to try to improve the standard of living of my people and to therefore, if they're building a gold mine. Again, this is the part that just kills me, is the Lima already is over right infrastructure but yet they're still investing in a gold mine they'll give us 2000 minting 40 golds and i'll take tools we don't have this crap you idiots they think cannot the confederate states has taken on new granada's debt like this, this i i'm i'm all for the the private investment i like it but it needs to be smarter again if you don't have tools then don't build crap that needs tools build a tooling factory right like, I, I thought we, yeah, the economic system is protectionism. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a different government that. Plus 25% private company okay so that would so the command economy we would have to have central planning and it's an inward focus interventionist economy where the government directly manages most uh, that don't necessarily want to go there, but it does, Argentina and Brazil are now no longer rivals. It does kill me that they are doing things that are directly going to impact, negatively impact what I'm trying to do. Right? It's going to negatively impact what I am trying to do with the tooling manufacturer. So we can get, we can get 12, it'll take 23 convoys from the Confederates. Yeah, we're, we're just, we're going to have to. Um, it'll give us 13.9 an employee annually. Another negative 15 bureaucracy. Sweden and ends their rivalry with Prussia. You don't want to destroy my freaking bureaucracy, you idiots. So not only are they building where we're already over our infrastructure, and why that's a problem is it's because it's going to limit the market access. It's going to just create all kinds of problems in Lima. And again, I like private investment. I do. But it needs to be smarter where it's not just running around building buildings like, oh, let's build this, let's build that. And you know what? It's going to take goods that we know the government doesn't have, but you know, we're going to build it anyway. And now we're going to build it somewhere where there's not really the infrastructure to support it. I love the game, but again, this is it's the same thing with like, hey, you know what? We're already short goods, but we're producing goods, but we're going to sell them to another country. Now, that is somewhat realistic, right? In the free market, I, I, I totally get that aspect of it, but. It's just, we don't have the tools. Postal savings unlocked a valuable method for people to save money even if they do not have access to a bank. Postal savings promote both the storage of flow of money among the poorest assistance. 
plus 20% maximum cash reserves, 50% farmer investment pool contribution along with shopkeepers, and it'll reach his investment fund. So we have a new cooling workshop. Right, we'll use wrought iron tools, which we will need 20 iron and 30 wood for, which will give us 60 tools. Right? Now, again, we are building a coaling mine, which will take 98 weeks. And, and, and see, this is the problem, right? We're going to have more tools now, essentially, but we're going to have less iron. And... What the, 90, what the hell? Who? Who came in? Philly bought a hundred wood. Uh, that, that, that's what I mean. It's like, how do they just... We... Eventually we can go to like electric sawmills, but it... I shouldn't have to go in here and say, hey, does anybody have wood? Or lumber, sorry, because my morons just went out and and, and and sold it all. Right? So we can get a whole lot of lumber from Brazil, finally, thankfully. And, and it doesn't cost anything because we have a trade deal. Um, and so we should be actually fine there. Right? Because we got like 135. Right, so or it will eventually grow there and it didn't cost us any bureaucracy because Brazil again, we have the tra trade agreement with Brazil. I'm a little disappointed that we can't get anything else from Brazil really apparently, but there is that. Right? Uh, radicals are going back up again because of discrimination. France takes on the Burundi peasants or re revolutionary debt. Right? So if we look at our trade deals, who we're trading with. We'll zoom in here. So we are we are getting wood imports, right? We are sending them cloth and tobacco. Alright, we are um Wait, what? What are we? We are importing grain from Russia and the Confederate States, and we are exporting fabric and tobacco. That's all we're exporting right now. Um, somehow we're still negative 102 lumber, even though we couldn't really be anymore. Um, modern sewage, we have three to five weeks left before we can, you know, get that done. Uh, the GDP is back down to 4.5 million, our standard of living is back down to 10.6, was briefly at 10.7, and Mexico has ended the rivalry with the United States, we have 85 weeks before this coal mine is done. Um, yeah, it, it, it just, it, it, it's insane to me, right, we're, we're still negative on tools. Um, liquor, yeah, is there anywhere that we can get liquor from? Uh, the Confederate States. Right, we can import it, or it would drop it by 13, we'd get 10.8 an employee annually. We need 48 convoys, we have those. Cost of bureaucracy, 15. Let's do it. Yeah. Kill the bureaucracy, right? Lowers the GDP even more. Rural folk are unhappy. I'm, just, I'm trying to not. Modern sewage is unlocked. Plus 10 land trade capacity. Plus 5 constructor, construction sector bad level. Plus 1 infrastructure per 100,000. And plus 20 maximum infrastructure per population. Modern sewage is the creation of specific tunnels of pipes to remove refuse from the city. Leading to a, leading to a better standard of living. Definitely like that. We like the better standard of living idea. Um, I just I don't know what else to really do right now. We go to society. Let's 
psychiatry plus negative five percent pharmaceuticals give us a max health system dialytic education realism gives us procedural study realism um, confederate states taking on my sores national debt so they're they're going all in on the whole buying people's debt as well uh, tools are still a negative seven we have ne we have a positive 91 on fabric um, liquor should be better fruits negative four fertilizers negative 15 we're, we're, we're getting, right now we're just trying to get the leader of the uh, trade union has passed away you know we are right now we're just trying to get as much of uh, things as we can uh, the Brazilian market that doesn't help us in terms of fish doesn't help us in terms of meat coal doesn't help us there either um, engines no um, artillery yeah no not really um, fertilizer no furniture Brazilian market we can get three where, where are we on fertilizer oh, so, yep so we can take on 33 furniture from the Brazilian <laughs> grain groceries iron lead liquor we already did luxury clothes luxury furniture Men of War, can get two from the Brazilians. Not gonna do anything. Paper, we can get one. Oh, sure. That's pointless. Why? Porcelain, silk, small arms. Steel, sugar, sulfur, tea, tobacco, food, wine, um, mining exit and mining air equipped as collapsed, trapping miners within the dark shafts below the scale. The exit has made the tragedy a story across air equipped and the nation. They dug me up and they left my friend behind. Um, the small price to pay. Five percent of lower strata pops become more radical. The industrialists gain support. Um, we have lost our diplomatic ties with Spain. But yeah, I, our standard of living is up to ten point eight, so that's nice. Um, I like that. Right? We 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 don't like the fact that we. I don't have any tools. And it's unlikely that we're going to really get ties or tools. Uh, Spain is developing an interest in Grand Colombia. We are up to 3.8 million people, right? Uh, you, you know, that, that part's good. Our government is up to 67. I feel like that's a slight improvement. Uh, Sweden, we have diplomatic ties with them, have been lost. Again, eh, we want to export anything. I mean, the only thing we really have a surplus of is fabric, and we're going to need that to make our own clothing anyway, so. Um, 60 weeks away, which is essentially a year, a little over a year. Um, a year, two months, so what, 14 months? Um, we get the obligation we owe to Chile has expired. That's that's good. That's good, right? I I, I do appreciate that. That's that, that, that the obligation to Chile has expired. Um, like in Lima, what is their infrastructure? Twenty out of twenty-three. 
though they actually have infrastructure available now. Um, urban centers at one. What level are they overall at? Uh, they're at 185. So they are building a gold mine, which will give them... Okay, might give them actually another level of infrastructure. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to need... I say we're going to need... And we're going to go iron mine. We're going to put another iron mine in Lima because... We did. We have to be able to produce. No, actually, no, right? Because if we get coal, right, we might be okay. Um. What about the food industry? Okay, shipyard. I don't know. I'm trying to think here. Um, all right, the Catholic Church, all right, Air Equipa, right, the population 38,000. What's the infrastructure? Seven out of 16. So, we are going to build a sulfur mine. And the reason we're going to build sulfur and then a Lima, okay, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll put the chemical plant in Lima, which will create the fertilizer. Again, it takes iron. Along with sulfur, of course. The United States and Mexico are now rivals again, according to Mexico. We are up to 90,000 loyalists. And a standard of living of 10.8. So, I, you know, those are very good things. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to protect our coal supply. And then transfer the coal to the iron mines to produce more iron. We'll cost more tools. Then we'll have to build more tooling workshops. And yeah, but this is the real issue of, you know, supply chain, right? We had a supply chain crisis here in real life recently. Uh, still are dealing with it in a lot of places, I believe. And, um, you know, you can kind of see it playing out here in the game where we are just struggling to meet the demands of our people and to try to get our own supply chain up and running. And because of that, you know, the economy is just suffering. Now, we desperately do need the arm industry, right? Because that is what is really going to get us going in terms of at least no longer having the artillery and the small arms being as, you know, expensive in our, on, our, um, on our budget. And so the gold mines have been expanded to level 5 in Lima. What are they doing now? Paper mills in Potosi. Which, you know, it, it makes sense, right? We do need paper. But again, they're going to do a platinum plantation, which we really don't understand. Because we have plus 53 fabric, so we, we don't really need the fabric. Right? It would make more sense if they were building it like a clothing manufacturer. But, you know, whatever. So we're negative seven on, on the small artillery. We don't have any demand for oil, so we don't need that. We're negative five. Small arm. Is there anyone Russia, France, and the Confederates? I don't know. I mean, that is just wow. Um, 39 weeks away for the coal mine. So, yeah, I think we'll maybe play a little bit offline here at some point. Um, I don't know why they're building up a not implantation, right? Like, we, 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 we don't need fabric. We're plus 48 on fabric. Right now. But you know what? Hey, can we export fabric anywhere? Uh, to Chile and 10. Right? It'll barely raise up 
But you know what? We will. We will export a little bit of fabric. France takes up Moldova's debt. Uh, 90, again, still at 90,000 loyalists. We have what? We're ranked 30th in the world. Prestige is 51. Oh, uh, again, one of the things they definitely do a better job of it here and too, as you can see, 6.4 income, 19.7 and 45.4 for the upper strata. Um, our taxes, the services and luxury clothing for the lower class, along with luxury furniture and porcelain. Services are the big thing, right? Services are the big thing for the lower class that they're spending a lot on and unfortunately we're not going to be able to really do much until we can I mean again Cold does you know work into expanding the services so that's why coal is so important um fortunately we are down to 89,000 now loyalists um 30 we have a third of our people can read though so that's good um Band the Dye Plantation in Araquipa. There it is. I mean, why do we. Okay. I, I, I mean, I guess. Plus six dot die. I don't know. I, I feel like we have enough issues right now. But fine, we'll we'll we'll, we'll add that to the list. Um, four point seven GDP, ten point nine standard of living, four three point eight three million people now. Um, You know, so so the population is going up, the standard of living is going up, the GDP is kind of fluctuating a little bit, the bureaucracy has definitely gone up from the trade deals. The radicals are kind of fluctuating back and forth. The loyalists have gone up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I still obviously have a lot to learn about the game, but... Like I said, I, I do really like how you can go in here and you can see um, luxury clothing and what they're paying the most for again, then the luxury furniture and porcelain, luxury clothing again. Is there anyone else we can get more luxury clothing from? Dutch, Russian, all those would cost bureaucracy. And again, obviously we're not in a position where we were wanting to spend a lot of bureaucracy. Um, Brazil, oh wow, what happened here? What happened here? Enrique de Valle, the leader of the landowners, has died. Brazil has lowered our relations because the rejection of slavery has led to their slaves fleeing to our territory for freedom. I mean, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, I'm not thrilled that Brazil likes me less, but I'm okay with that. I'll just let them fight. I mean,. I'm sorry for skipping the dual notification, but that's kind of, you know, I've seen it enough times now that it kind of has gotten old. Uh, hey, we're up to 92,000 loyalists. I think that's the most we've ever had. So that's a positivity. There's some positivity there. About 20 weeks for both the cotton plantation and the coal mine. So on our end, we will do the arms industry in La Paz. Like crazy, but again, we need it's just something we need to do uh, as we're about five months away here from that because it impacts so many buildings and it, it is it's an issue. Now, again, like the, the average person is not necessarily impacted, I don't think, by the high prices of particular and small arms in the, in the country. government, certainly is. Right, and you know, maybe with all the iron mines we have in Bolivia, or Bolivia, maybe we'll become an arms producer, which would be kind of crazy. The intelligentsia has negative ten percent society technology cost because they are happy. Uh, can we? Can we promote them? Right, bolster will cost us two hundred authority. We can bolster them. 
mechanized workshop is unlocked. A mechanized workshop is a replacement of various physical tasks at a workshop with mecha a mechanical solution. Allowing a greater amount of work to be completed at a faster rate. Knight plus 10 economy and skill building level cap sewing machines. Mechanized looms for textile mills. Mechanized workshops for furniture manufacturers and canning and shipped work. Alright, so. Let us pause just for a moment. And see here. So if we went to a mate. 10 more tools, 20 more wood, 65 more furniture. We would lose 1,500 laborers, we would gain 750 engineers, and 1.25 thousand machinists. Okay, what about if we just did our clothing manufacture? What would that do with sewing machines? We need 5 more dye, 20 more fabric, and 5 more tools, and we produce 40 more clothes. We would also need 250 more engineers, 250 machinists, and 500 less laborers. I think we have the dye. I know we have the fabric, but we also don't have the tools. But we are going to go to sewing machines in the pause. Right, and we don't yet have the qualification. Uh, engineers aren't willing to work for a range of 13.27, they would accept a range of 29.20. Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess. They are deciding they'd rather be employed than unemployed. Um, that is not going to help our tools situation, but... Is there anyone we can get tools from that we don't... No, nobody wants to give us tools. So we're, yeah, we're going to have to expand our tools. Yeah. Yep, and each it too. Because we just we don't have tools. And it's gonna take more tools to expand and to improve our production of our mines, of our workshops. And so unfortunately we are gonna have to build up the tools. The tooling workshops, which is going to increase, you know, infrastructure, it is gonna increase industrialization, so I guess that technically is a good thing. But it does push all the other buildings back further. But what, what can you do, right? You're, yeah, we're kind of expecting you were damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. Um, I really don't want to spend any more bureaucracy to try to import tools, and plus they're not giving me enough tools for it to really matter anyways. So we're just hopeful that this coal mine, which is going to cost tools but give us it's not telling me what it's gonna give me. Um uh, resources. Coal mine gives me twenty five coal percussion cap. The percussion cap is a signal use device which allows firearms to operate reliably in all types of weather. Munition plant and rifling technology in the munition plant which is the building. Uh, logistics is spreading we're a month away now from coal, so 25 coal, right, so we're, right, we've got, an iron mine here, so doing a condensing engine pump it would take 30 coal just on its own and 20 tools. Now we would have 80 iron, we would have a lot of iron, there's a revolution in Argentina, Kind of in the, in the center of Argentina there. Like, the only thing that's going to help out the tools would be making steel. Right? Right. But, again, we do need... We do need more iron if we're going to. Alright, we'll do atmospheric engine pump. 
Um, to try to produce more iron. Because we're going to need more iron for the more tools. We're going to need more iron for the arms industry. And then that means also we're going to need coal. So we did a condensed enzyme pump. We produced 35 more coal, 10 more tools. Yeah. We, we just have to do that. Um, fortunately right now because... And again, we'll do the atmospheric engine pump because we need iron, right? We're already at plus 42 iron, I guess, which is going to hurt the development of, um, you know, our, our employees there. But at the same time, they're building again that paper mill. 170 weeks away in La Paz, Argentina is arguing their aristocratic revolt, of course, naturally. So we are here in 1859. Some good, some bad, some ugly, right? We are almost up to an 11 standard of living. We're almost up to 3.9 million people. We're up to 4.7 now in the GDP. Our bureaucracy is just in shambles, though. And you know what, actually? Actually, you know what we're going to do? We are going to build the arms industry first. Because... That's going to create the more demand for iron. That's going to keep the iron in the country. That's going to help with the input goods. And it's just, then we'll go after the tools. Uh, and we'll have to continue playing around with, you know, increasing the coal output. Then we increase the iron output. Then we do this and we do that. And again, all of that, unfortunately, a lot of it's going to take coal, iron, and tools. And eventually, hopefully, we'll be able to build steel, which we can also then build buildings with. But right now, that's going to be the big um, kind of supply chain that we really have to focus on, I think. The industrialists and, and the private investments kind of taking care of some of the other stuff. We've got our bureaucracy, and so that's kind of, in the, you know, not for right now. We are going to build some more government administration buildings. We try to help with that as well. But for right now, that's kind of where we're at. Some good, like I said, I, I feel like things are kind of going better now in this episode, although it's hard to say. If we take a look out here at the world. I, I don't see a lot of change. Um, some revolutions are going on. Uh, France, Britain, and the Confederate States of America are continuing to buy up a lot of the debt. Looks like something weird happened here with the United States and Mexico. Um, I kind of missed that one. Argentina is having a civil war right now. A revolution, whatever you want to call it. And that is while we are on the episode here in March of 1859. About four years have passed. We are do generally go on three times speed. Thank you to anybody and everybody for watching. I am Stuart. As always, if anybody wishes to leave a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel, it always is appreciated. As I said in the beginning, I do appreciate each and every one of those followers and subscribers I do have. And I will talk to you all later.